they call Ghana Africa for beginners. Indeed, it's one of the most stable and versatile countries in West Africa. It's home to more than 100 tribes and ethnic groups. Follow me on my ride across the land of kings and get to know some of their traditions. There exists another unwritten law in West Africa. No matter where you park your vehicle, it's never in the right spot. Is it okay? Moving two meters from where you initially stopped makes everybody happy though and is the perfect start of doing border business like usual. Our first stop in Ghana, the coastal town Aksim. It's famous for its fishing and its beaches. But finding our hotel outside of town was not easy. This is the road. Yeah. Pass here. Yeah. Go here. Okay. You see the hill. Okay. And you go straight. Okay. Go here. You see the hill. Yeah. Go the hill and go here. Straight. On the the cap, the boat. You're, you're right. And we would not have managed without the help of the locals. We arrived in Ghana, me um, with a nice dirty face like always. And we are staying one night at this nice beach close to Aksim before we go off inland. Spending a night at Blue Moon Lodge was like spending a night in paradise. And we already realized that the touristic infrastructure of Ghana is much more developed. We left Blue Moon Lodge and drove along the so-called Gold Coast of Ghana to Fort San Sebastian. Roadside lunch in Ghana. From the 15th to 18th century, several forts were built along Ghana's Gold Coast as trading points for European countries that were leased to them by the African powers, mainly trading gold, ivory and slaves. We wanted to visit a fort that was not only a museum, but taken back and functioned by the people of the village and therefore found a better use these days. Today, Fort San Sebastian is used as a post office and from several authorities. And it looks a bit like straight out of a Star Wars movie. Behind the scenes of taking a red picture, it's hot, it's sweaty here in the sun, but behind me you can see the nice fort. I 
had one mission for Ghana. I wanted to find a place where the traditional kente cloth is still made, a woven fabric that is worn by the Ashanti kings. Our best bet, heading inland, direction the city Kumasi. I recently learned that the term Ghana means warrior king in the language of the Suninke people, I think. And um, there has been numerous kingdoms and empires over the centuries here in Ghana. And the most powerful were the kingdom of Dagbon and the kingdom of Ashanti. And the cool thing is, there is still an Ashanti king nowadays. And he wears this special clothes um, called Kenta. And I'm super interested how these clothes are made. From Kumasi, we went to Bonnir, a little village where most Kente clothes is sold. Afterwards, our search for Kente took us to Adan Vomase, an even smaller town where weavers still make the Kente the traditional way for the Ashanti king, royals and everyone who appreciates the cultural significance of Kente. It was already late afternoon when we arrived but we still got a tour through the Kente factory. The weaving days, before the 11th century, they used a the flint product to cover the nakedness. And please, Kente is more than just a cloth. It is not a piece of fabric by which Ghanaians can be easily and distinctively identify international conferences. As I'm speaking, it's no more a razor for the king. First, we learned about the theory. Then, how to prepare the cotton or silk for the weaving. Finish product of the warp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right from here, we are going to set up the loom. We learned about the colors and the complexity of the designs. There are still new designs introduced, for example, to honor people. When President Barack Obama visited Ghana, the weavers made an Obama design for him that he received as a gift. Until today, Kente is traditionally woven by man. It's mostly made out of cotton, or the real expensive stuff is made out of pure silk. who couldn't resist buying some Kente. I took the precious fabric back to Germany. And one of my friends, the fashion designer Isid Bostan, made a beautiful coat for me. Thanks for joining the journey and learning more about Ghana's cultures. The next episode will take us to Ghana's capital Accra and the beautiful Lee waterfalls. Comment, like and subscribe to be part of the upcoming journey.